Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana. I'm an acrylic artist. Thank you so much for stopping by my studio today. I cannot wait to paint what we're going to be painting today because it's my favorite subject and many of you know that is fruit. We're going to be painting some luscious cherries with a bouquet background. I'm on a 6x8 canvas panel but you can paint on any surface that you want. And I am using Deco Art Traditions paints. They're a medium body artist grade paint and I love them. Luscious, creamy paints. They are some of my absolute favorites. So I hope you guys are going to pick up your paint brushes and your paint, whatever paint you use, and your surface and paint along. If you are new to my YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, so you know every time I post a video or go live. And please give me a thumbs up. It all helps me right here on YouTube. So let's take a look at what we are going to be painting today these delicious luscious cherries with this beautiful bouquet background. I absolutely loved painting this. Again, I'm on a six by eight canvas panel. And, but you know, again, you can paint on any surface you want, but this is such a simple design. Um, I did some blending with the paints, which these paints lead very well to doing. Um, my bouquet effect in the background, I did use some glazing medium, but you don't have to use that. As long as you remove a lot of the paint out of your brush, you are good. You'll get that transparent look like I have on some of them. So if you are ready, are you ready? Well, let's grab our paints and supplies and let's get painting this beautiful and delicious cherries painting. All right, let's work on the background here. Um, I'm going to be painting in some, um, oh, a bouquet effect in the background. But first we need to lay down some of the um, colors that are gonna go underneath. Um, our bouquet effect. So I've got, I'm using Traditions paints. I've got some raw umber here, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that out. Oh, this one hasn't been opened, so let me open it. Now this is Deco Arts, um, one of their artist paints that they have. This paint is um, a medium body professional uh, grade paint. I really love the pigment in this paint. So we're going to put this color down. I also want to add a red in here. So uh, I think I'll put a little burgundy out. Now I have it in bottles still, but it, it comes in the tubes now. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of burgundy out. And I think some naphthol, some naphthol red, and of course some warm white. Those are the colors I want to use in the background on this one. Let me get my warm white here. I'm going to have my spitzing bottle here. Go ahead and spritz my side of my palette off uh, with water so that I have water to use. You can also use some um, extender and blending medium as you work this paint. It's not a super large surface, so I think we'll be okay. I want to start dark up here. across. I think I might add a tiny little bit of black to that or some dioxinine purple. Let's try some purple. Just want to see if that will darken it just a little bit without turning it purple. There we go. It's a little purpley so we'll, we'll work in some more of this and I want to bring it down to about here. And just put a touch of it down here in this corner. Now we're going to pick up some burgundy. 
and begin working some of that in. Not, I did not wash my brush. We're just going to lay this in gently, very gently blend it where it meets the other one. And some over here. I'm going to go into the naphthol red now and start adding a little bit brighter color in here. And now I'm going to wipe off the excess paint and pick up some white because that's going to blend a little bit with that red that's in there and make this really light color. Now I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to tickle blend all of this being very careful because um, you know where it's starting to dry you can lift paint so we've got a really cool background uh, on here I think I'm going to repeat it I want to bring this red up a little bit more so I'm going to dry while I'm drying I'm going to wash my brush out so I can start with a fresh brush with nothing mixed in with it I want to bring that light color over farther to the left as well and bring it up onto the canvas. Let me get this completely dry. That looks pretty dry. Make sure it's not hot before I go and paint on it. So I'm going to grab my two colors here, my Doxine Purple and my Raw Ember, and we'll start again with that. And maybe not bring it down as so far and put it there. Go into my Burgundy and start adding that in here. Go into my Naphthol Red, and I'm bringing that up farther into the canvas now. Wipe my brush off and grab my warm white. And we're going to let this come in and blend. I'm going to grab a little drop of water so that I can it's starting to become a little dry on the canvas here. wipe my brush off and a little bit more of that red and then just gently blend those colors. Okay, that's got a super cool background there. Fun, fun, fun. Maybe bring some of that red up into that brown a little bit. Before it dries, if it's if it's starting to dry, get out, you'll start lifting, and just get a little touch of that in there. We're going to dry this now, and then we're going to start creating our bouquet effect uh, in the background. Now, bouquet effect, if you don't know what it is, is simply a blurred out image. Generally, it's done in photography with the background. It can be done in the foreground as well. But it's very easy to paint a blurred out background. So we're going to get this all dry and then start on our bouquet effect in the background here. I think it's mostly dry. Okay, so for me to create my um, bouquet effect and by the way it is pronounced bouquet not boca um, I have heard other people pronounce it boca um, but I found some photography um, videos on YouTube one specifically that was a photographer that was specifically referring to this technique and how to pronounce the word properly um, and it is pronounced bouquet. Now, if you Google the word, um, uh, when I Google it, it has this little mouth beside it that will pronounce it for you to let you know exactly how it is pronounced, which I love about Google. So I did put it in there, how do you pronounce, and I spelled out the word, and it brought it up, and it does say bouquet. 
So, it is pronounced bouquet, not bokeh. Uh, just so you know, um, just a little general education and information there. All right, let's start working on our bouquet effect in the background here. All right, I've got a, a circle stencil. Uh, this is a stencil that is on my website, but uh, you can use any circle stencil. I'm currently working on one that is a full sheet, uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet that will have several different rows of different circles because when you're creating a bouquet effect, um, you sometimes want to vary the size of circle that you use, okay? This particular one, uh, I think I will keep most of them this size, but I might grab my larger uh, stencil and do just a few down through here that are bigger. Okay, you can, um, if you don't have circle template or circle stencils, you can use these circle templates, which I got mine at Michael's. Hobby Lobby sells them too. I don't know if they still carry both sizes, the larger one and this one. Um, but I got both these at Michael's many years ago. I also have a this circle template on my website that has some assorted sizes. Some of them are not perfect circles, but in bouquet, it does not have to be a perfect circle. Um, I have assorted size stencils, but for some reason I could only find these two. So we're going to go with these two. And I'm going to use the stencil brush. And we're going to just start... Um, adding these circles into the background. I want to keep them kind of light and soft. So, so I'm going to put some glazing medium on my palette. Now, glazing medium will keep things more transparent. It dries a little bit faster than an extender does. Um, that's why I prefer to use it. Uh, it does great when you're wanting to do a smoky type effect. So I am going to take a little bit of the glazing medium. And let's see. Let's start with a little bit of this red with a little tiny bit of white because I want to lighten it up. Let me grab a paper towel here. Because I want to offload some of that and grab some glazing medium. Keep it. I got a little bit too much glazing medium in my brush here. All right, let's see how this is going to start out here. Let's see if we can see that circle. Barely. A little bit more white into it, I think. Tap, tap, tap. And swirl, swirl, swirl. That's pretty bright. I'm going to tone that down, I think. A little bit of burgundy. Still very bright. So I'll grab some of the background color. I don't want it to be super bright here. I want it to blend more into the background a little bit. So there we go. And we're just going to bounce all over this canvas and pick up glazing medium. As I go across, we're going to do all different values of circles on here. So don't, um, I'm just going to start with this lighter value of pink stuff. When it dries, they should kind of fade down in there a little bit. So that to lay on my palette. Alright, let me put a little bit more white in the mix of my glazing medium. These are super incredibly easy to make. Okay, so that's a good number of that color. Let's change the color up a little bit. I want to go a little more pink, so let's get some red and some warm white. Mix them together. Maybe add a little burgundy in there. I'll get that a little more pinky pinky. I'm going to remove the paint out of my brush and put a little bit of glazing medium in there. And we'll see if this is a big enough jump in color here. 
it's going to have to have a little bit more of the burgundy in it. Work that in with a little glazing medium. Bring my palette back on camera for you here. I feel like I've crowded myself into a tiny little space today. Okay, that's that's a better color color change there. So then just go with this color and put it wherever you want. I want a lot of these circles in the background, so I want a lot of them to overlap, some to be just by themselves. We want varying colors here. Extremely important to have a good range of colors here. So let's go into our red with a little bit of glazing medium. It's still got just a touch of that burgundy in there, but it should be just enough red to make a big enough change of color. A little bit more of the red, a little bit more glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap. <coughs> and then we're just going to work our way all over this canvas. Um, it's not a ginormous canvas, so doing the bouquet effect should not take you a lot of time. And with that glazing medium in there, it should dry fairly quickly. start adding some brighter ones in here now. Go back to our warm white. Tap, tap, tap. A little bit of glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap. And we'll start making some brighter ones in here. Okay, these will stand on top a little bit more. And they can go wherever you want. Didn't quite fill that circle in, so I'll put it back on there. I think we'll go with a little more white and glazing medium. And I want to make some a little bit even brighter. I have some coming off the edge here. I want more white. So I'm going to load more white, tap, 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 more glazing medium, mix, 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 tap, tap, tap. Now at this point, we could go to straight white if you want to go to straight white. I'm just going to keep slowly adding a little bit more white into my brush. I'm going to have to go back over here with a few uh, darker ones because I want to keep these lighter ones over here. clean out my brush and grab some glazing medium and a little bit of burgundy. Maybe a tiny bit of that brown. Tap, tap, tap. I want to put a few more over here. And maybe just a touch of red in there. Let's have some go off the edge here. I think this is just one of the most cool backgrounds. I'm going to wipe my brush out and get mostly glazing medium. I want a couple up here that are super transparent. Okay. 
Okay, I must have something under my stencil here. That's two times I got a little boo-boo. Got a little boo-boo. Alright, some more glazing medium in my brush. Tap, tap, tap. And I'm gonna make a few more lighter ones. Maybe add just a touch of red in there. And you can stop whenever you feel like you've got exactly what you're looking for. Alright. Let me clean my brush again. And I'm going to load just glazing medium in my brush if I can find a spot to blend it. And this might get me a couple of really transparent. One here. And they'll definitely uh, fade into the background. build up on the edge so I might have to move to a different circle here. I'm only going to do a couple more anyway so let's go off the top up here and I think I think that might be pretty good. I'm going to put one here and this is just I'm just loaded with glazing medium now. There's a little bit of paint in my brush so it's, it's leaving some on here. But that's got us a super gorgeous background. I am absolutely loving that. So um, we're done with our stencil brush now. And our stencil, you can go and clean your uh, brush and um, get this completely dry and transfer on your line drawing. All right, I've got my uh, cherries transferred on here. So I'm gonna put out some warm white. And let's go with some. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Let's use some naphthol light. And I'll see if this will cover up the background. If not, I'll have to go my traditional route, which is mixing a little bit of gray and painting in. Find me a brush I can use here. So I'm just going to create a um, kind of light pinky orange color here. Something we can base coat in our cherries, an undercoat if you will. Um, one of the reasons I absolutely love this paint and I really hope that you guys will try it. Um, it is so pigmented that it just is so easy to work with, so gorgeous to work with. I absolutely love it. All right. I might make this one in the back a little bit darker, so I might grab some burgundy out and make these in the back just slightly darker than the one in the front. So I'm going to a little bit of burgundy for this one. And because this paint is so so pigmented, um, you know, I don't have to do that undercoating thing. This is truly one of the best paints that you could use. I would paint everything that I paint with these colors but um, I try to make it where, you know, you have the paints that you have, so. When I'm doing the larger paintings for my home, I tend to um, go more towards the artist grade paints. works just like any other acrylic paint. It's just more pigmented, so you get more 
bang for your buck, I guess. Um, Alright, so that's a nice start to our cherries here. Let me dry them. So we can start playing around with different colors and stuff. We're going to mostly use the colors that we've used in the background on our cherries. So that'll make it fun. If I, I want to mention that if your um, bouquet up here got brighter than what you want, you can take some of that burnt umber and just uh, gently wash over them and it will take them down a little bit, just a little wash of them. All right. So let's start on this particular one back here. Now I want to um, grab my pencil here. Um, this has a little bit, now that, that circle, I made it a little bit raised there, but we'll work it out when we do. This comes over a little bit, maybe not quite that low and then back up over there. So it's got a little dark edge over there. So we're going to start laying in some darker colors. This is going to be the, the, the lighter. Well, actually, I'm going to flip it and do this the lighter side because I kept the lighter colors over here. So we're going to make this the light side. Um, so we're going to... Um, I'm actually going to put out a second color here. I think I'll put out some red violet. I'm not sure I'm going to use it since I didn't use it in the background, but I'm going to put some out and we'll see how this is going to work out. We're going to start with our uh, burgundy color and I'm just going to side load whatever brush that you have and you're going to paint the same way that you paint all your other stuff. Alright, let's do a little shading next to this one. We can shape that. Need more water. You'll find that you'll use less paint um, than when you're painting with um, with the Americana paints. I'm going to grab a mop brush here because I want to gently mop that. shape of my cherry here. Okay, so since I'm going to switch, I was going to put the light over here, but I'm going to put it on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and darken that edge just a little bit. Okay, um, I'm not going to wash my brush out because we're using all reds here. Um, I'm going to go into this one and take some of my naphthol red and burgundy and mix them together. And we're going to start working on this one. I probably should get a bigger brush here. This one's not going to quite get the job done that I want to get done here. Maybe it will. We're using amazing paints here. I'm going to grab a little bit more of the burgundy and work that in. And kind of work it over. It is this paint, oh my gosh, you guys. I wish that you were painting with it now and that you could just get the lusciousness that I'm getting from it. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this paint. All right, I'm going to wash out now. And we're going to go to this one in the front here. And we're going to start out with just straight naphthol red. Might add a tiny bit of white in there, but mostly naphthol red. Okay. Just I'm just creating three cherries that have varying 
values of reds and pinks that we used in the background. I want to make sure I cover up my light edge that I put on there, but I want to. All right, I'm just going to kind of scumble what's left in my brush there. And then I'm going to gently mop it. Okay, you know, you use your mop brushes wet, I mean, dry, <laughs> and then you clean them on a wet spot and dry them off on a dry spot. All right, we are looking good. I'm gonna go back in here with this one with the burgundy. This paint dries fairly quick, so we can just keep going. I think I'm going to go to a bigger brush here in just a second. Now we'll be adding some more darks and stuff in here, um, but for now we're just, we're still just establishing a little bit of our first dark, okay? No, don't clean the brush and go into the red. Need water, and I have a little bit of burgundy, so I mixed both of them, probably close to equal amounts there. I was going to go to a bigger brush and then I didn't, so I'm definitely going to go to a bigger one here. Grab the burgundy and a little bit of that violet color. And we'll start adding some violet color in here. Definitely need water. Alright, let's mop, mop, mop. That is pretty wet especially want to make sure that they are blending where the colors meet. We want them to blend beautifully. All right, I'm, on this one, I'm gonna take some of that um, violet color and start working some of that in over here. It's gonna look pretty bright, don't be scared about it. We just want to brighten it up over here. Start adding a new value on top of our base coat that we have on there. So we can start getting some cherry look there. All right, so let's start adding some other colors on here. We're going to add, I think I'm going to put out <laughs> well, I didn't put any yellow in the background, but I kind of want to put some yellow or some raw sienna. I'll put both those out and see what I like. Some raw sienna or some burnt sienna, one of those. Oh man, I got red paint all over my hand. I have to clean that off. I, I mean, look at that. Ridiculous. don't know how I did that. All right, so some hands of yellow medium, some raw umber, and some burnt sienna. And we are going to start. First, I'm going to clean all this red on my, must have came off of one of my bobbles. I cannot imagine where that came from or how long it's been on there. Got it all over my arm. I did put an apron on today because already got gesso on a perfectly good shirt. Just a tiny little dot and it was almost impossible to get out. So I have... Okay. <laughs> I think I'm good to go. I'm afraid to touch anything now. All right. <laughs> oh, let me clean my brush off here. And I think I'm going to grab, well, I got paint all over the end of my brush. That's not good. It's 
Okay, I got it all over my arm. Who knows? Who knows? I just feel like <laughs> the red paint is everywhere. My gosh. All right, I'm going to go to an angle brush. My goodness gracious. All right, I want to start putting a little bit of this naphthol red on here. Where is this naphthol red light? I can't remember. It's one of the naphthols. And st start creating a little bit brighter color through here. And then I'm going to pick up some of that violet. And we're going to work some of that violet down through here. Just gently blending. That's another thing I love about this paint. It is so easy to blend the colors and get gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Not that. And we'll definitely be going over that again. And I'm going to go into my violet color, which this is red violet. Love this color. We're going to put some more of this out here on this one. So I'm just hopping around, picking up colors. And adding them onto my cherry. And then mop. And blend. Clean your mop. We clean our mop after every time that we use it because if we don't, when we go to mop someplace else, it just transfers the color and we just keep going. It just it just keeps going. All right, I'm not going to clean my brush. It's okay if we got a little bit of that um, violet in there, but I'm going to go into my burgundy now. Mix a little red with it. And we're going to go back down to this one. Start adding some darker color here, a little bit more burgundy. I'm going to take it to about there and mop and blend very, very lightly when you're doing this. It's just a light thing. Don't, um, let me get that bristle out of there, which I can't. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm really liking the colors on this one back here. I think it's gorgeous. So I think I'm going to go into that naphthol red and put some of that on this one. Not completely dry so I started lifting a little bit so I'm getting out of that getting out of it all right back into my naphthol red I think this is naphthol red that I'm using I'm not 100% sure that might be naphthol red light yep so let's grab some naphthol red we've been using naphthol red light so now let's go into some naphthol red I'm gonna dry this Because these aren't very big and we are moving around, I still want some. Um... All right, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that violet and blend that in with my naphthol red and bring that over here on this edge. We're going to be creating our light edge over here, and I know this is a little bit of a darker color but it's also a little bit more of a transparent color. So it's not going to go down incredibly bold and dark. All right. Go back into my Napsaw Red. And I'm going to go 
go over here now. I want my shapes to start growing, so now let's put some of this on here. We still want that to stay dark there, but we do want it to start looking more like a red cherry. So we're going to go on this one now. This is really just a simple layering of colors. So I've kind of got some good base stuff going on here for all of them now. Especially that one back there, it's looking pretty good. This one I need to add a little bit of dark. Um, and through here where the stem is gonna go. So I'm gonna take the burgundy, maybe a tiny bit of that violet, and we're gonna go right through there. Just create a little bit of a dark place where the stem is going to go. This one we can't see. It is on the opposite side. So I want to get these dry. We're going to start working one cherry at a time. And we're going to start creating all of that beautiful, gorgeous depth and everything into these cherries. Make sure that it's dry. I'm gonna wash my brush, wipe out the moisture. So on this one here, I want to create a dark area right through here. We're gonna have some highlight here, and most of our highlights gonna be on this side. We'll have some a uh, little bit of reflective stuff coming over here. So in this area we're going to start with the burgundy and the violet. We're going to mix those together and we're going to work those in right through here. I'm going to come on this side and very gently soften by tapping. I'm double, I'm picking up both colors to put some more burgundy out here and we're going to tap some more in here and I'm going to soften out here and then I'm going to grab my mop brush. I would like that little bit of texture in there um, so I'm not going to take too much of it out out because I want to go into my, um, I think I'm going to use naphthol red light to maybe a little bit of naphthol red and some of the violet, red violet. That's a little darker than what I want so I'm going to go grab some more red light and we're going to put this in through here. to bring it over into that darker color. I'm going to try and blend it out over here a little bit. Okay, I know it's looking not the best at the moment, but hang in there. Hang in there. While that's drying, I'm going to take that violet and mix a little bit of naphthol red with it this along the outside, blend it in, a little bit more of that violet, I really want to make sure this is dry. color right there. And one 
going out to the red. Maybe a touch of burgundy for down here. Gently, gently. We're getting there. We're getting there. When we add our highlights on here, it's going to change this whole piece completely. So let me dry that. I think I'm going to mix a little tiny bit of warm white in with my violet and red mix here, which is mostly violet, I think. And we'll start laying some of this in there, maybe just a tiny bit more of the warm white. We'll start creating a, our highlight edge over here. And we'll start putting some down through here. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to dry that. Okay, I'm going to go back into here. And that was my, let me get some more burgundy out. Burgundy, and it was a little bit of the violet, and we had a little bit of the red in there. A little bit more of the burgundy. Wipe off and grab some red as I work my way across here. A little bit of violet. And blend gently. Dry. I'm going to let that one set a little bit because it's got a lot going on. Okay, I want to come over to this one with my burgundy. And go back over this. I have to add some violet in there to darken that. A lot of paint on my brush there. there. Soften those brush strokes. We'll try that and then we're going to add some naphtha red on there. Violet and a little bit of white in there. And we'll start adding some of this in here. a wash of this violet color. I need some more of this violet through here. A 
all the way around this one. Wipe off and blend that. Okay, that one's looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go back to this one here. I'm gonna take my naphtha red and a little bit of white. That's too bright, so some burgundy in there. Get on the background. Reds are hard to clean up. Okay, that one's looking good. Let's take this naphtha red and go over here to this other one. A little tiny bit of burgundy here. Outside the lines. A little bit of burgundy, or not burgundy, the violet. red on the hand a while ago. Okay, I want more naphtha red on this one. Okay. That's pretty wet, so I'm just going to very lightly mop it. Just going to remove a little bit. And I'm going to put some of this over here. what colors I want to put in here. I think I really think I want to add a little bit of yellow or uh, raw sienna. Just want to kind of tap some of that into this cherry and some over here. Here. I've still got some layers to come on here, so all that's probably going to cover up. Um, we can have some reflection of the bouquet effect in our cherries. That would be absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I want a little bit more color on this one, so I'm going to go with my red 
and my violet and mix them together with the water. And we're going to add, oh, goodness, doing such a terrible job of getting outside the lines here. I've got outside the lines over here. Too late to clean it up. Just keep layering. I think I just completely wiped that. Grab a little bit of water. You really need this to be dark through here. Let me grab some dachshunding purple out because I need to darken a little bit more so I'm gonna use some dachshunding in with my whew, or a lot of dachshunding in with my burgundy that's gonna help my burgundy a lot long time ago. All right, let's put some of this purple over here. It's purple with a little bit of the burgundy. Down to here. These are your darkest areas here. Dachshunding purple. I think that might perk that that little kind of reflection type stuff up. Okay, and then let's take our purple and burgundy mix and just do a one to one mix here. Maybe a two to one. Two burgundy, one dachshunding purple. I like for my cherries to look dark and rich and so incredibly red that they almost look black. That's the way I like mine to look. side because I just feel like it needs a little shadow over here. Okay. Starting to look more and more like little cherries now. I'm going to take my um, Raw sienna in yellow and mix a little bit more of that. And yeah, just add some little dabs of this in here. It's like a little, I don't know, 
almost like a little reflection thing, but it's it's not because there's no yellow in the background. Although you could put yellow in the background, yellow and greens, that would be gorgeous. But we're gonna use some, maybe some yellows up in the stem so we can carry that color a little bit into, into everything. You could also use your um, raw umber to mix in with your shading color if you need to. Um, Pretty good down there. I want to add some of this um, violet on the other one, some of this kind of washy violet. Bring some of that color in. You don't have to cover the whole cherry. Put a little wash of that in there. This one down here, I'm going to make a wash of that fall red. And put some naphthol red on, on it. I feel like that dark color needs to come over a little bit more. So take our burgundy with a tiny bit of purple. And just bring that over and maybe. certainly don't want my cherries to look black, but I really like the dark look on the cherries. I think it makes them more realistic. Okay, um, I'm going to wash over them one more time. I'm going to use the burgundy, the violet, and the naphthol red. Those two together, create a wash, lots of water, not much paint. I do feel like I have a lot of paint there. Okay, we're going to go over all of them. and then work on our stems.
highlights on here. I'm going to start out with warm white and then move to um, straight white. Get some of these brush hairs from mopping out of here. I think my mop brush is starting to get a little bit worn. I do not want to come off of there. I don't want to scratch with my finger because I'm afraid that they will um, with paint. See, like I just did right there. Could have scratched a little bit too hard right there. So now I gotta try and cover that up. All right, <laughs> let's start with some warm white highlights. Um, I'm actually going to go down to a smaller angle brush and find a new paper towel. I only need to move my paints back. I'm taking up too much room. Okay, highlights. I'm going to start with some warm white. Alright, so for this one, the highlight's going to come all along the edge here. And across the top, kind of tight, across the top. And then come down right through here. I know it looks incredibly bold. Let it settle in there. I'm going to go with one here. And across here. Up through there a little bit. I like to soften things out with my finger or the edge of the paintbrush. Soften, soften, soften. If they get so bright that we're like, ah, oh, we can wash over them. Not to worry. All right, warm white. Warm white is not as bright as white white, but it's still bright enough. See, that one's not looking so incredibly bright now. I do need to widen it on this side, though. Just up here at the top. good for our first highlight. Let's go to some straight white now and brighten those highlights. Just want to make sure you don't have any red in your brush. I'm going to really work it into my brush so that it comes off a soft white and not a harsh white. And maybe not do it all. All 
All right, so if you want to really make these even shinier, we can play around with adding some of the bouquet reflected into our cherries. Now, if you're scared to do this, you can certainly dry them, varnish them. If you don't like it, then you can take a baby wipe and wipe it off. So let me put some glazing medium out. And I'm going to load my brush with some glazing, glazing medium, tap my paper towel, and then I'm going to uh, take, I think I'll take the warm white. glazing medium, maybe just a tiny, tiny little bit of the red, naphthol red, and we'll just create some bokeh effect right here. And we'll blur it out. This is super fun to do. A little bit more warm white. And glazing medium. And I think I'll put one. No, I don't want it straight across. Let's go up here and add one. You could also use just a small little dry brush. That one, got, that one got carried away, so let's try that again. There we go, much better. And a little bit more warm white in my glazing medium. You could use a tiny little um, dry brush and just rub some of these on here as well. That would be fun. A lot more glazing medium. Those are fun, fun, fun. I'm going to take this little round brush and just create a little bright. A little bright something, something going on there. Let's make some reflective light in a couple of places. You can do this with warm white or white. So I got some of that. Goodness, I've never had the bristles stick in my paint like this before. Well, I'm not getting that one out, that's for sure. Ooh, that's too wide. That one's a little bit bright, so I'm going to take it down with a... Get the white on my brush. I'll take it down with some... Naphthol red, maybe. And the 
this one up here. I can't really see it. highlight itself. I think that will help it a lot. Okay, well, we're ready to work on the stem now. So I've got some, um, what is this, raw burnt sienna. So we're going to start our stems out with this color. So we'll start right here. in there so it'll flow. I'm just using a small round brush here. Okay, we'll just take it up. Okay, and then this one here. It's going to be thicker down where it comes into the cherry and we're just going to bring it up and off the canvas. They're all meeting up here. All three of them are meeting up here somewhere off the canvas. And then this one is coming from this one right here. up okay let's grab some green out um, let's grab some medium green oh my goodness so these bottles just do not want to open okay I'm just gonna wipe my brush off but not clean it I'm gonna put just a little bit of green in here stems. And that's a pretty bright green, so don't uh, let too, mu too much of it get on there. Let's take our yellow and our raw sienna. Lay my arm in the paint. And, oh. My brush is overloaded here. I'll put this up here. And let's not have it be quite that wide. Nice thin little stems there. Um, down here on the stems itself, actually I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow down here. It's yellow and raw sienna mixed together. And then we'll take some of our naphthol and our violet and mix them together. And we'll put some of that on here. Make sure we stay off of our highlight here. Go in and touch it back up if you need to. And you can just pull a little bit of that into the stem as well. Okay, let's add a little highlight on those stems. We're going to do some warm white. Along this edge.
there. And there. And take that warm white again. here where the oh, I took it off that's where the, the stem is bent and catching a little bit more of the light okay and then where the stems meet down here we can add a little bit of dioxinine purple darken those a little bit and there we go I think that's going to finish off our cherries um, you can again glaze onto your cherries if you would like um, if you feel like they need it I think once you add the highlights on there and you kind of step back a little bit I really want that bristle out Once you step back from that, I think you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So I think that turned out gorgeous. Um, layering is the key when you're doing um, stuff like this that needs a lot of depth. So the cherries definitely stand out from the background. Uh, which I love that you can see those cherries popping right there. I think I need to add a little bit of a shadow. Where's my other paintbrush? It. There it is. I'm going to take the dioxinine purple and a little bit of, I think, burgundy. Wipe right, most of that off. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a shadow here next to this one. Pretty good. Definitely need to touch up a little bit on this edge. I have to put my little highlight back on there. And then this one I think will be done. I kind of lost my little reflective light right here because I put that thing over it. Let's see if I can get a drop of water here. There we go with the red paint everywhere now. Thin that, make it a little bit thinner. Oh my gosh, you guys, I've never had so much trouble with red paint. I'm glad I put a red shirt on today. All right, I think that's. I'm going to call that one done. I think it looks pretty darn good. I'm very happy with it. Um, so you can put red on top of red colors or pink colors or whatever and that bouquet effect in the background just makes it pop. I love the little little reflections of bouquet that I did on the cherry itself. I think that is super, super cute. Um, just 
adds to it a little bit so super fun all right now see how the highlights on there just made those cherries just pop right off the canvas they look like you could just grab one and eat one i love painting fruit so i hope you've enjoyed this one give me a thumbs up please like comment share and subscribe it all helps me on youtube and i appreciate every single one of you i'll see you guys on the next one Bye bye